Hello everybody, welcome back to Sky Saga Alpha 5 and it is time for another Tutorial Tuesday. So today we're actually going to be doing something a little bit different and we're going to be looking at the social tab. So this here controls a lot of the way that you play this game and there's a lot of stuff in here so I thought I'd just kind of quickly go through all of this stuff for you guys and show off how you actually use this and how you can build missions and how you find friends and how you do all of that type of stuff along with how you edit your profile and everything that is possible to currently do in this tab. So there's a lot of stuff here. So there's the left hand side and the right hand side. Now the right hand side is all about profiles. So this is where your profile pops up to start with but then also other players profiles will pop up later on when we get to talking about other players and how to do build missions and stuff like that. For the moment we need to talk a little bit about how this side of the tab works. So when you're on your profile, you see your profile picture, which gets taken automatically as you create your character. And then if we go into here and click edit profile, in here there's a whole bunch of symbols and also titles that you can use for your player. So the symbols you can find a lot of the time out in worlds in gold chests. And gold chests are just kind of hidden here, there, and everywhere. Sometimes you have to break through a wall to get them. But they are out there. And there is 87 of these symbols that you can find currently in the game. Now, some of these symbols can also come through rewards, such, like, such as the Settler and the Explorer. Those are both from rewards you can get for leveling up your Settler and Explorer. You can also, in here select a title. Now titles at the moment come from once again leveling up Settler and Explorer but also come from winning community quests. So winning a community quest will give you a title that you can use for just one week which is why you'll often see a lots and lots of people pushing very very hard to try and win the community quest for the week so they can get that one title and then they get to keep that for an entire week. So these are just little things that you can do to kind of personalize your character and this little icon and this tag is exactly how this appears in a world to another player. So this little shield is going to hover above your head for most of the game and then if somebody gets close enough to you it'll expand out and give your title and then your name as well to that player. Pretty similar to the way it works for mobs but for you you actually get to customize what comes up above your head in all cases. So of course in under here is also your signature color which you can change to be whatever you want it to be. Now you did set this originally at the start. It also colored your original armor and just because you wanted red armor at the start doesn't mean that you can't now change your tag to be blue or green or whatever you want it to be. That is perfectly fine. Now of course to save your changes you just hit save here and otherwise you just hit cancel to get back to this screen. So this screen also prompts you and tells you your ranks for each guild. It will also tell you the ranks for other players' guilds as well when you actually click on another player. Now also in here we've got islands. So this is all of the islands that you currently own. Now you can buy more islands through the social hub and there's a little vendor in the social hub that will sell you more islands. So I've got a few here because I'm working on a few different projects and I have a few projects in mind that I want to do. So I've got a couple of different islands ready to go. Now in amongst these islands there's this little star here and you can bookmark an island and when you do it comes up on your favorite places over here which is the default tab for the left hand side. And it is a good idea to keep anything that you go to regularly in your favorite places. The island that you're currently on will always be in your favorite places as well as the social hub. So those ones are kind of locked there. So whatever you're currently on and the social hub are always kind of locked and then anything else gets put in to the list in the order that you favorit favorited them in. And that's the easiest way to make sure that you can keep going back to the specific island that you're working on time and time again. Finally in here we've also got a photos tab. So this is another quick way of editing your photos. So you can hit P to pull up the camera and then you can hit G to pull up the gallery which will show you this view um, of all of your photos or you can just go through the social tab and you can find all of your photos this way. Now if you've been playing for a long time like myself you'll actually have photos dating all the way back to Alpha 3 in here and you can make these things public or not public depending on 
whether you want them to actually pop up in the loading screens and if you want other people to be able to see them when clicking through to your profile. So this is it, this is your profile, this is the way you deal with your own profile. Now, we'll go over and have a look a little bit at the left hand side before I pull somebody else in here and we talk a little bit about how you give build permissions. So over here in the favorite places tab or the left hand side of this thing, we've got all of the favorite places which are quick and easy ways of jumping to places like this. I should also mention in your island you have a little view island information thing and we'll get back to this in a sec because this is part of the way that you publish islands but and also give build permissions to islands. So like I said, we'll get back to this one in just a second. Now, so these are really helpful and useful for being able to jump to places if you like or jumping to your own islands you're currently working on because you can just quickly pull up this tab and click on any of those that you like. I would say try to keep this list pretty minimal. You can put as many in here as you like and you just have to scroll up and down to find the ones that you want. But keeping it pretty minimal will mean that you've always got things close at hand. Now if we go down a little bit further, these are some top islands. Now these ones are islands voted on by the community and they have the most number of likes. So these islands are all stuff that people have created. The little symbols on the side tell you what is on that island. So the sword, cross swords means that there is a PvP post and you can then go into that world and PvP people. And then the race symbol is obviously a race. So there is a race somewhere on Aura's treehouse here. So these islands are really cool ones to check out. So if you ever decide that you don't really want to run more adventures or whatever, you can come in and check out some of these places and see what some other awesome people have been building. You can literally just hit go and jump through to those. Or you can have a look at the actual island itself by clicking on the island information and it will tell you how many visits it has, how many unique visits and all this kind of stuff. And you can also like it, which adds to the island's liked total and pushes it further up this popular islands tab like this. And then hitting back will push you back over to here. And it actually has pulled up Aura's profile. So we can actually go here and have a look. So this is Aura Borealis. And so Aura's profile picture and then how many followers are following and also their guild stuff. It also allows you to unfollow the player because I'm currently friends with Aura, jump to their current location, block them and give them build permissions. But once again, we'll get back to this because this checkbox isn't actually enough to keep build permissions or give build permissions to somebody else. So once again, then they have their islands and this is all of the islands that uh, Aura currently has. And then it's got their photos as well. So these are all the photos that Aura has made public. I'm just gonna kind of quickly flick through some of these. And this is some of the stuff from Alpha 4. So Aura did some really, really cool building back in Alpha 4. And they've got all of the photos of that still here. So going back to the left hand side, we can now go to friends and following. So this is where all of the people that I have followed pop up. And if they've followed me back, then they might considered my friend. So we're gonna have a look at Brownie Pie. So Brownie Pie and I are friends because they've followed me back. And Brownie Pie currently has build permissions. Once again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's choose somebody here who hasn't actually played before in Alpha 5. So anybody who's got color in their shield has obviously played Alpha 5. Anybody who's black like this hasn't played Alpha 5 yet. So Alvio is a friend of mine from a previous Alpha, so from Alpha 4. But if we have a look here, uh, Alvio has zero islands, meaning that Alvio hasn't actually played Alpha 5 at all because he just hasn't signed in, which is why his shield is black and he has no islands. But I can still go through and have a look at all of his photos from Alpha 4 and view his profile. This is still set at his rank at the end of Alpha 4. And of course, I can't jump to his location because he doesn't physically exist in game. So there's a whole bunch of people in here, obviously, because I've been playing for a while and I've got lots and lots of friends in my friends list. Now, at the very top here, I can actually search for a particular friend. So if I just type Aura into here and go filter, it should pop up Aura Borealis, except for it is case sensitive. So there you go. Now it's popping up Aura Borealis and I can see that Aura 
is not only online, but also in the Arctic Village crypt here. And I can just remove this and filter all clear, and it will pop out back to the full list of people. Now, not only can you jump to somebody by selecting them and clicking jump to them, but you can also just use the tag next to them to jump directly to where they are at any time, as long as they're online. If they're not online, obviously this tag is going to be grayed out because they don't exist online, so that you can't jump to their physical location. So there's obviously a few people online today. And then, so this is the friends and following. So this is the people that I've physically found and followed myself. Now, if I jump to my followers tab, this is those people who are following me and not the other way around. So these are a few people who have decided that they want to follow me. However, I haven't actually run any adventures or anything with these people, so I don't know them yet and I haven't followed them back. But if I do kind of see them out in the world and we go out and we adventure a little bit together, I'm sure I will follow them back. Now, because they're following me, they can view my profile at any time and they can see any of my islands that I've made public or anything like that. So this is how people can find your islands and such, because you can then click their profile and jump to their islands just like this. So this is a really cool way of setting this stuff up, I think, because it means that people can follow you without you following them back. And it also means that, like, if we have a look at this, this is Jellybird who's following me. Uh, just following me, there is nothing, there is no friends there, which means I can't give them build permissions, I can't jump to their location or anything like that. It is just a one-way thing, basically. But I actually, I can, I can see who is following me, which I think is quite nice. And then finally down here, we have the search feature. Now, the search feature is really cool because this lets you search for any player in the world. So, I really don't know who we're going to search for. Let's just search for the and see if we get anybody. Search heroes. And we don't. And so this is the thing. This search function is very, very case sensitive. So if you are trying to search for somebody, make sure that you're spelling their name exactly right. And if you're not spelling their name exactly right, search for something really, really simple. So a first couple of letters or something. So see, if I was looking for noob gaming, I could definitely just type N and I would be able to find noob gaming just like that. But if I typed a lowercase n, I would not have got noob gaming pop up. Let's take a look. Search heroes. Oh no, sorry, I do get noob gaming pop up because there is an n in gaming there. So that's the way this all works. So that is about it for all of this type of stuff. So I think it's time that we grab somebody else over here and talk a little bit more about build rights and how you give build rights and what build rights means for each of your islands. So now I have uh, Brownie Pie here who's going to help me show off some of the kind of new build permissions that you can do and give on home islands. So the other cool thing about this is if I go up to Brownie Pie and hit E, I can pull her profile up to the side. Now we're friends, so I can click on give build permissions. Now I've given her build permissions, but if she tries to attack that wall over there, she's not actually going to be able to do any damage to the wall. As you can see, she's not able to dig that wall out at all. Now this is because not only do you need to give build permissions here, but you need to give build permissions on your individual islands. Because you have a lot of them now, giving a person build permissions would in the previous instance, have given them build permission to every single one of your islands. And to combat this, if you go into your information tab, there is another thing that says allow friends to edit. Now, if you click this, they can now actually edit your world and they can only edit the worlds you say allow friends to edit. So there you go. Now Brownie Pie can actually edit this world. And not only can she break down walls and things like that, but she can also pick up anything that's been dropped on the ground, which is a new thing to Alpha 5. You can't pick up anything in a world unless you have build permissions on that world. You can also obviously place blocks and all that kind of stuff when you've got proper build permissions. So that's the way that you give build permissions. You not only have to do it for the individual players, but also for each individual world you want players to be able to do. Now, because I've given build permissions for this island, anybody else I now tag to have build permissions will be able to come to my main island and build and do whatever else they want. And then if I go into my islands and I also give build permissions for, let's say, my church here, 
Brownie Pie could now jump over to that island and edit that in any way she likes because she's got build permissions to her player and then there's also build permissions for that island. So thank you very much Brownie Pie, that was great. And now it's time to talk a little bit about how to make an island public and what that means. Okay, so we are over on one of my islands. This is the jungle ruins here. So I've now set up just a tiny little racetrack here, so it's just a straight run and then there's the race timer at the end. Now, if I run over this, it starts and stops correctly, and if we go into here on the leaderboard, you'll see that it pops my time up correctly. However, if I run this again, and I can somehow run this faster, I've now run that faster, but if I look at the leaderboard, the leaderboard has actually updated now. That is interesting, this used to not work. However, the easiest and best way to have this leaderboard update and run correctly is to publish the island. Now, what this means is if we go into the um, social interface here, I am currently in my ruins, so if I go into my information session and then go make island public, that will pop up the number of likes that it's had and the number of visits and all that kind of stuff. Now, if we run this again, should go into here and see that it has reset this leaderboard because anything that happens while the island is not public doesn't actually really count. And it also means I can run this and hopefully be faster and then it will update this. So now anybody can come along here and run this tiny little race that I have and their scores will update this leaderboard and you'll end up with a whole list of people here and you've got first, second, third, so forth, just like you get with the community quest stuff. Now the other thing that is interesting to note while we're here is this is my island and yet now that I have pulled it public, I can't do anything. Um, I can't dig here, I can't kill chickens, this has basically become a social hub. The only thing that will let you do any form of attacking or anything like that is to place down a PvP post while the island is not public, and then when you turn the island public, you can actually use the PvP post to attack other people. Now, the PvP post is a little bit weird. Uh, there are no teams for island PvP. It literally just enables you to kill another player who is standing around on the island. And then when you go into the PvP post, literally all it will have is a player's name and then the number of kills that they have next to them. So we can actually go over to Aura Borealis' treehouse and have a look at the PvP post that is over there because that will give you a good indication of how these things actually run. So here we are in Aura Borealis' treehouse. We're actually in underneath the treehouse at the moment where the portal is. And this is where the PvP post is. So if we have a look here in the PvP post, you can see that there's been a whole bunch of people coming on here and killing each other. So when you come on, you can kill any other player that is on the island that has a PvP post, and you just rack up the number of kills you've got based on the number of people that you kill. So, obviously, Onyx Eve has come on and killed 13 other people that have been on this island. And once again, it's kind of like a free-for-all type system. There is no teams, nobody goes red or blue or anything like that. Um, and you literally just get to kill whoever is around you, which... It's kind of interesting for a PvP type map. So yeah, this is how all of this stuff works and what happens when you turn an island public. So Aura's place is actually pretty awesome, I have to say. So thanks Aura for having this set up so that I could quickly go and show off the PvP post. And even though the PvP post is here, I still can't like kill chickens or break blocks or anything. It literally just gives you the ability to kill other players that are in the same world. So there you have it. That is the social menu now and all of the awesome features that it contains. Please let me know in the comments if you think I've missed anything and I'll do my best to answer any and all questions you have about this new and amazing interface. So that is it for this time and I'll see you next week.